Good morning, and welcome to this third Sunday of Epiphany here at St. Michael and All Angels in Prince George. Blessed are you, O Christ, Son of God. You were before time began and came into the world to save us. Blessed are you, Son of Righteousness. You shine with the Father's love and illumine the whole universe. Blessed are you, Son of Mary, born of a child. You shared our humanity. Let, Let heaven, heaven and earth shout your, your praise. praise. Blessed are you, Son of David, born to rule. You received gifts from the wise men. Blessed are you, Heavenly King, teaching and preaching, healing and comforting. You proclaimed the kingdom. Let, Let heaven, heaven and, and earth shout their praise. praise. With all the creatures on earth, we sing and dance at his birth. Praise, praise and, and honor and glory to you, you O Lord, Lord Most High. High. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We listen for the word of God. A reading from Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock shall taste anything they shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways. God changed his mind about the calamity he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 62, verses 6 to 14. Our refrain is take refuge in God, all you people. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and semi-salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. Take refuge in God, all you people. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Take refuge in God, all you people. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Take refuge in God, all you people. Put no trust in extortation. In robbery, take no empty pride. 
Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. Take refuge in God, all you people. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. Take refuge in God, all you people. Let us pray. Lord God, in a threatening world, we look to you as our rock of hope. Hear us as we pour out our hearts to you and give us your grace and protection through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, 29 to 31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord, Jesus Lord Jesus Christ. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. The Responsory. The Lord is with us. He is our stronghold. God will help at the break of day. The Lord is with us. He is our stronghold. God will help at the break of day. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God will help at the break of day. We not, will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea. God will help at the break of day. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord, what awesome things he has done on earth. God will help at the break of day. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. God will help at the break of day. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the Lord is with us. He is our stronghold. God will help at the break of the day. Jesus said, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The story of Jonah is a cautionary tale of what man thinks should happen and what God offers to humanity. 
God asked Jonah to go to Tarshish to cry out against it for its wickedness. Jonah tried to run away from this request and found himself endangering a ship and all its crew. The cargo was thrown overboard and still the storm raged. And in the end, Jonah was thrown overboard to save the ship and crew. But God was there, and Jonah was swallowed by a whale, within which Jonah remembers his vows and loyalty to God, and the whale spewed him onto the dry land. And again, God asked Jonah to go to Tarshish and declare, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Jonah did go to Nineveh and cried out against it for wickedness. Nineveh repented, God changed his mind, Jonah was angry, and he cries out against God. That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. Jonah thought Nineveh deserved to be destroyed. He did not want God to change his mind and forgive and forget. He did not want God to be loving and merciful. There is a side with this statement because this is a tendency as us as human beings to condemn rather than forgive, to be miserly and not generous if we think someone doesn't deserve it. We judge another rather than give them space to change and become their better selves. When Jesus came into the world, God's arrangement under the law changed. We were adopted as God's very own sons and daughters, loved, forgiven, wrapped in mercy and grace. We were called to work in partnership with God. So when Jesus and said, came to fishermen and said, follow me, Simon and Andrew, James and John, they followed without hesitation. They followed, not understanding everything he said. They followed even when they were perplexed and confused. They followed, even when they didn't know where they were going. They followed, even when the journey was painful, and there were struggles, questions, rejections, and danger. The main thing that Jonah and the disciples had to give up were their own self-centeredness. Eventually, they learned that to be truly human, they needed to follow God. We are on the same difficult journey. Amen. Precious Lord Jesus, wonderful Holy Spirit and loving Father, we are grateful you have touched us and called us to be your servants. Our hearts know you are within us, above us, and all around us. We thank you for the call you have put on our hearts and lives. Grant us the courage to go where you send us as we journey with the risen Christ. Hear our prayer. Lord, you call us to be fishers of men, to be your disciples, your ministers of reconciliation, your righteousness in the world. Strengthen us in our calling. Lord, help us now when we see the world in its darkness. Make us instruments of your peace. Help us to know what to do, what to say, and how to say it. 
Help us to see for you, speak for you, and act for you. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Today, in the territory of the people, we pray for the parishioners of St. Michael and all angels, Prince George, in our search for new team ministry leadership. We pray for continued health, strength, and gifts of the Spirit for our priest, the Reverend Alexis Saunders, and her family. We pray for new vocations and leadership and ongoing participation in our church as we prepare and organize for the annual vestry meeting. We especially pray for Bishop Lincoln, his wife Tanya, and their family. We also pray for Grace Church Prince George and St. John the Divine Quinnell. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Bangladesh. In the Anglican Church of Canada, we pray for the Most Reverend David Edwards, Metropolitan, and the people and clergy of the ecclesiastical province of Canada. In the Companion Diocese of Montreal, we pray for the Regional Dean, the Reverend Sophie Rowland, and the clergy and people from the Joint Deaneries of Point Clare and St. Anne. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for the Dean, Council, and congregations of the Atlantic and Montreal areas of the Eastern Synod. Lord, hear our prayer. Healing Father, we place into your hands all those who are sick, in need, and who have asked for prayers, especially Tony, Penny, Tobias, Stephen and Susan, Mike, Camilla, Marilyn, Marilyn, Jackie, Delbert, Christine, Eileen. Show them your kindness and mercy, comfort and sustain them. Lord, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, trusting in your promise of eternal life with you, we pray for those who have passed from this mortal life, remembering Ingrid and Kevin, Gina and Bob, John and Carol. We pray for the comfort and peace of Christ for those who mourn, Margie Burton family, Ingrid's family, the Juno family, the Robillard family, and friends. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, our strong rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts to you and pray for an end to this pandemic. We trust you are with us in this time of noise and chaos. Whisper your words of encouragement, comfort, and hope to all who need them in these days. Draw close to those who are sick with the virus and all those who risk illness caring for them, protecting and uplifting them. For all those who have died from the virus and those who grieve their loss in isolation, comfort them in their sorrow. For all those isolated in their homes, sustain them in joy and peace. For decision makers at all levels, send them your wisdom and good counsel to serve their communities. For all people around the world, grant us willingness to do our parts to follow the health guidelines to stop the spread of the virus and help us to be kind, be calm, and be safe with one another. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
Let us remember before God our selfish ways, the things we have done wrong, the sorrows we have caused, the love we have not shown. Most merciful Father, forgive, forgive us, us our sins, sins against you and, and against each, each other. Strengthen us, us to overcome our weaknesses, that we may live in love as you would have us live. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We come to that point in our service where we remember the ancient tradition of spiritual communion, which is ours whenever we are unable to receive the bread and wine. After we've said the Lord's Prayer and the prayer inviting Jesus to come to us spiritually, we'll just sit quietly for a few moments. And as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us pray the communion prayer. Jesus, I want to receive you in my heart, and I cannot do it in the sacramental way. Therefore, I ask you to come to me and fill me with your presence, your peace, and your love. Grant me, Lord, the graces I need most. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us in this spiritual way with Jesus Christ. May we who follow Christ bring life to others. We who the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God, from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the strength of God uphold us. May the power of God keep us. May, May the, the wisdom, wisdom of God, God teach us. May, May the hand of God uphold us. May the shield of God protect us. May the host of God guard us against snares of evil and the temptations of the world. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.